Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about some of the new Killing Floor 2 beta stuff. Specifically, the four new weapons that they just added into the game. So I did try out each of these um, for at least a brief amount of time. I haven't used them a whole ton and there could be some things that I'm missing, but I have a general overview of how they feel currently. Now keep in mind this is still the very first beta, what I'm talking about here. So things are bound to be changed a little bit in the future. Uh, some of these weapons may get buffed, some of them may get nerfed, certain uh, mechanics might be switched around a little bit on each of them but for right now we'll talk about each of them and I'm just gonna go through the line in which I played them so the very first weapon that I played was the HRG Bastion this is the new weapon for SWAT this is a tier 5 weapon that's gonna be available to everybody that plays SWAT this is the stoner uh, but now for SWAT it weighs 7 and it is a tier 5 weapon um, it's surprisingly light for a tier 5 weapon, and this weapon I was really looking forward to, and it did not disappoint at all. This weapon holds 60 rounds in its base. It will go up to 120 if you're max level with SWAT, which is great. That's more than enough rounds. It still has the same reload speed as the stoner, uh, same reload animation too, so if you're familiar with the stoner, you will be easily able to reload cancel it because it does take a while to reload. Its sights have been changed, and its sights are much better than the stoner sights. I don't mind the stoner sights whatsoever, but these sights are far better in my opinion. Uh, they really allow you to keep firing, and the stoner already didn't have that much recoil. This weapon has the same recoil pattern, so not very much. The Bastion also does the same amount of damage as the stoner per shot, doing 33, which is not a bad thing actually, because almost all of SWAT's guns do very low damage. So this one doing low damage isn't that big a deal. This weapon also does not count as submachine gun damage. This weapon counts as AR damage, which is a little bit better in certain instances, but honestly probably won't make too much of a difference overall. Uh, high rate of fire with this weapon, 9 909 rounds per minute, which is great. And this weapon actually does have a secondary, unlike the stoner, which you activate a shield. This shield will block everything that's 180 degrees in front of you. Every time it gets hit, it will lose power. Well, as, as long as you keep it out, it will start losing power. So you do have to put it away or wait for it to break and then wait for it to recharge to use it again. This feels a lot like SWAT's DLC weapon with the Glock 18 and the shield, but you don't need to ADS with this thing, which makes it 100 times better than the Glock 18. It also weighs less and is overall just way more useful than the Glock 18. I see really no point in using the Glock 18 anymore if you're going to be allowed to have this thing. You can't even take both of them together because they just weigh too much. Separate though, you can take this one. I took it with the nail gun and then you still have an additional three weight that you can spare so you can either throw the two upgrades into the nail gun that it can take and grab a medic pistol or you could just not upgrade the nail gun and get a medic SMG, which this weapon is probably going to be one of SWAT's top tier weapons now. It's really good. It's secondary... Uh, fire with the shield is much better since now you can use that to reload and protect yourself while you're reloading. Just use this back up from enemies and reload. At 7 weight you can take any other weapon that SWAT has. Uh, you could take a medic SMG and only be up to 3 weight so you still have 5 to play with whether you want to throw upgrades into your uh, medic SMG or if you want to go with another weapon like a P90 or even something like C4. All of those seem perfectly fine. Seems like a really well-rounded gun, and probably one of the best weapons that SWAT has at the moment. Well, from one good weapon to a very bad weapon I found, this is the HRG Blast Brawlers. This is the other HRG weapon that was added with this update, and this goes for support. So this is the Static Strikers that have been reskinned. This is a Tier 4 weapon, and it costs 1600 DOSH for you to buy this which is quite a lot. This thing weighs 9, which again is a lot. You can throw one upgrade into it because it is a tier 4 weapon, so it can go up to 10 weight. It holds 4 rounds in it base, although with the new uh, buff to support, if you're going with the higher capacity magazines, it goes up to 7. So this weapon does 36 damage per pellet, firing out 5 pellets. Whenever you attack with the light attacks, it will fire out these pellets and it will go in a straight line. Once you choose to attack as well, you will be forced into firing both of these. And these don't count as two extra shots, they both count as the same shot, uh, which I think actually rounds this weapon up to doing double what it shows in damage, I think. This weapon felt incredibly underwhelming when I was using it. It felt like I was cosplaying Iron Man, but I had sock and boppers on my hands and it just wasn't working out very well. With its bash attack, it does 100 damage where you just throw both your fists out and punch something. With its heavy attack, it does two, up to 200 damage of melee damage. But that's only if you charge it up, which feels really weird too because it, you're already swinging this slow since you're playing it on support. You're not swinging it quick like how you do on Berserker. This weapon feels a lot like the HZ-12 to me. The problem is the HZ-12 is better than this weapon in pretty much every way. The only thing that the HZ-12 can't do that this one can do is that it can block. 
which would be awesome if support already didn't have a weapon that could block that's 100 times better than this weapon. It's like firing the HZ-12, but if you're forced to fire both barrels one right after the other. There's also a delay in between the shots, and during those shots you cannot do anything. It's the same way with the reload. You can try to reload cancel, and I sort of did that, but you can only really get away with bashes. You can't actually block cancel with this weapon when you're trying to either reload it or fire it, which is very annoying. So it pretty much means that you're going to be using heavy attacks at close range, uh, while trying to spam block or spam parry to not get hit by large enemies, and then move uh, far enough away to be able to use its primary fire at those ranges where it's going to still be pretty underwhelming. This weapon I was extremely disappointed with. It seems like it would be so much fun, but I found it more frustrating than fun. Uh, even if it wasn't going to be good, this might be support's worst weapon right now, which is bizarre for me to say because support really doesn't have any bad weapons. They're still support weapons. They still do a lot of damage. Even if you want to run around with like dual buckshots, they're still pretty viable. With these things, they feel just all around weak and really need a buff of some sort. They either need to be able to reload cancel, or for you to fire each fist individually, or for them just to do more damage, or their heavy attack needs to empty out like all of the shells with one big hit at close range melee. But none of that's there right now, and all of it feels pretty underwhelming. Funny thing though about this, since I compared it to the HZ-12, once you fully upgrade this, it does 45 damage per pellet, still firing out 5 pellets. Uh, that's less than the HZ-12 fully upgraded. The HZ-12 will do more damage than this, and will do more damage per second because it doesn't have the delay. Also, anybody wondering, yeah, this weapon does do less damage per shot uh, fully upgraded than the double barrel does unupgraded. That's not counting both barrels firing from the double barrel, that's counting one barrel firing from the double barrel. If you fire both, you're still doing way more damage than this thing firing both of its fists. Alright, now that we've got one of the frustrating weapons out of the way, let's get to the Thermite Boar. And this is Firebug's new weapon. This is one of the DLC weapons that you're going to have to pay for if you would like to unlock it. This is a tier 4 weapon for Firebug, and this is just the Seal Squeal. Uh, if you enjoy the Seal Squeal, you're going to enjoy this weapon. If you don't like the Seal Squeal, you're probably not going to enjoy this weapon. This has the exact same fire mode as the Seal Squeal. With its primary fire, you fire out a fire dart that hits something, explodes after, you, after so long or after you trigger it, its secondary fire causes it to trigger, and it spreads flame all over the ground. Even though this is just a complete copy of the Seal Squeal a demo has, it's still probably one of Firebug's best weapons right now. The fuse time on these is 4 seconds, assuming you don't detonate them right away, so you do have some time if you would like to lay these down as traps, you can. The impact damage is 150 damage, as well as the explosion on it does 150 damage, plus then you're doing fire damage afterwards, and this can spawn floor fires, so you can slow down anything and deal more damage with the fire with this. This does have a somewhat slow rate of fire, about the same as the Seal Squeal, but that's not too bad, especially since you're just going to be burning up everything. Um, I took this with the uh, larger fuel tanks having 12 rounds in it, and that's pretty strong. It's surprising how many explosions you can get to go off, and since this does do explosion damage, it works surprisingly well against flesh pounds. It does really well against everything. The only thing that it didn't do incredibly well against was uh, scrakes, which even then it still did decently. The Thermite Boar also only weighs 7 so it fits in a really nice weight for Firebug. If you don't want to upgrade it, you don't have to. And you could still take something like the Husk Cannon if you want to do more direct fire damage. So you could really destroy Flesh Pounds with this and destroy crowds pretty easily. You could take uh, either the Spitfires or the Trench Gun if you want to have more crowd control. Or the Flamethrower if you want to have more crowd control. This weapon is likely going to work with just about any of Firebug's weapons, which is really nice. For its upgrade, it does upgrade one time, increasing it by 12.5% overall in damage. So its impact goes up to 168 damage which wasn't real noticeable, and it goes up to a total weight of 8. Makes it a little bit limiting. You can't take the uh, Helios Rifle then, or the Husk Cannon, but you can still take something like the Flamethrower, so if you're going with that, or Trench Gun, or Spitfires. A fantastic weapon for Firebug, and I see it being probably one of their best weapons as of right now. It's going to do very well against everything that's not a Scrag, whether that be directly hitting Flesh Pounds with it, or just firing it all over the place to kill tons of trash. And then we have the final weapon that was added, which is the FAMAS Master Key. This is a Tier 3 Commando weapon. And this was another weapon that was incredibly disappointing for me. This weapon seemed really cool, because I usually like the FAMAS in most games, and having a Master Key weapon sounded awesome. This weapon has some pretty big problems. First up, the FAMAS is kind of big on the screen. It takes up a decent amount of screen for a Commando weapon, which is a little bit strange. 
I wasn't quite used to that. In the base clip, it holds 24 shots, and the FAMAS is only three round burst. So let's talk about this weapon individually, both the Master Key and the FAMAS. I'll talk about the FAMAS first and the Master Key second. The FAMAS has an ACOG on it, which is a little bit useful. It makes it a little bit easier to fire at range, but it feels really weird in burst fire. It feels like it should either be semi-auto or full auto only, not burst fire. The burst fire from the FAMAS is actually not all that bad though. It's very, it has a very tight grouping and it has low recoil, so it is easy to control and it has a very fast rate of fire at almost 900 rounds a minute, so about the same as the stoner. And it has an okay reload time on the FAMAS. The FAMAS part of the FAMAS Master Key, I actually didn't mind at all. It, it was an okay weapon. I still wouldn't consider it one of Commando's best weapons. It does uh, 33 damage per shot, so the same as the M16, and with its upgrades it goes up to 25% more damage at max, going up to 43 damage, which is still kind of okay. I still don't think this is going to rival the uh, M16 or the AK for that matter. The AK will out damage this weapon too, and I can see myself taking the AK over this simply because it's full auto and the, and the uh, FAMAS isn't. So I'm likely not going to be buying this weapon all that often with Commando, at least for the assault rifle part. Let's talk about the Master Key part, which is the part that seems to be the most interesting. The Master Key is a pump-action shotgun underneath, which is pretty disappointing too. I was hoping that it would be a semi-auto shotgun. So the Master Key holds six rounds in it base. Um, that can be increased by both of the ammo perks that Commando has. So you can actually go up all the way to 15 rounds in the Master Key if you'd like. You can also go from 24 rounds in the FAMAS all the way up to 60, which 60 rounds in the FAMAS makes it feel way better than uh, the 24 rounds. The 24 rounds you just burn through so quickly that it's not even funny. 15 rounds of the Master Key is a bit overkill. You're probably never going to use that much before you have a time to reload anyway. So it doesn't really help that part of it, which makes the gun feel kind of awkward, depending on which ones you want to go with. The Master Key fires out six pellets that do 25 damage apiece. Uh, this also scales the same way that the FAMAS does, so when it's uh, fully upgraded, it does 31 damage per pellet. Which is still not that great. 30 damage, 6 pellets, you're doing 180 damage with a shotgun. That's not a whole lot of damage for a shotgun. Um, as well as since this is a pump action shotgun, it shoots very slow. It shoots at 50 rounds per minute, which is really bad. Um, for whatever reason though, the wiki and other people have told me that it's technically full auto if you hold down the trigger even though it has a slow rate of fire, which that's not how that works. Uh, it's a pump action shotgun and yeah, if you hold down the trigger it'll fire as fast as you can pump the gun, uh, which is still very slow. So it's not a full auto shotgun, it's a pump action shotgun with a very slow rate of fire. Upgrades really don't help this weapon a whole lot. Like I said, going up to 8 weight is not a good thing for Commando. You're going to be pretty much pairing this with a Medic AR at that point. Um, otherwise, you're going to be pairing it with something like the AK or the M16, and I don't see you pick using the FAMAS for anything other than maybe long range at that point. But even then, 8 weight for a long range weapon that doesn't do that well, there's no point in taking this weapon for that reason. You're just going to take the FAL or the SCAR over that just because it's better. The FAMAS is completely disappointing and will not be a good weapon for Commando in pretty much any circumstance that I can think of. It might be fun to play around with, but that's about it. The Thermite Boar is probably going to be one of Firebug's best weapons because it's just a seal squeal, but for Firebug. The Bastion is probably going to be one of SWAT's best weapons overall and is a lot of fun to use. I would highly recommend it. And then the Blast Brawlers are pretty much just going to be a meme. You're never going to take them on support. You might take them on Survivalist just because you can have the extra weight and they count as a melee weapon. They also count as a support weapon so you can get faster reload speed, but again, the Frostfang exists and there's no reason to take it over the Frostfang. The Frostfang is better than it in every way. Those are my thoughts on the weapons so far in Killing Floor 2. Let's see if they change some of these. I hope that the FAMAS gets buffed in some way, maybe give it a larger magazine, maybe actually make the uh, Master Key full auto and then it will actually be good or semi-auto. Buff the Blast Brawlers in some way, either make them so they do ridiculous damage with the heavy attack or do something more than what they're doing. And then hopefully the other two don't get nerfed to where you just won't see them. So thank you guys so very much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, then be sure that you can subscribe. That way you get notifications whenever I post any of these videos. And I will talk to all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool and bye.